Hello, welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm your host, Nikki Wellman. Energy healing is an holistic approach to the health and wellness of a human being. It's about recognizing the human being as a whole and the convergence of disciplines that exist in medicine, science and technology. Emotional freedom technique, or EFT, is the restoration of balance by the gentle stimulation of certain acupressure points through the tapping of fingers. Energy healing is not involved in medication. It's concerned purely with the body's energetic fields, like acupuncture has been for thousands of years, and reflexology in, uh, you know, as part of that stable of, of healing methodologies. But it takes on a psychological dimension. So it's dealing with the emotional experience of people um, and the pathologies of emotion, but it's tackling it on a holistic basis and how, that it, how it achieves that is by re recognizing the mind-body connection which science is now proving in the most remarkable ways. The, the real way to address addictions is to see what's holding them in place because they serve a purpose. The understanding of the energetic dimension of healing um, I think is very harmonious with Torah principles and not widely enough recognized either. I'll give you an example. There's a profound saying, the first Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Shnoya Zalman, the, the author of the Tanya, was quoting from the ethics of the fathers. And uh, the sages teach us there that da ma lemaila mimach, uh, which means on the surface of it, know what's above you. It's an ethical principle to know what's above you. In other words, if you are sensitive to a spiritual dimension and recognizing that God runs the world, you'll be less motivated to do crime. You'll have some humility in your life. You'll be more of a mensch if you know that which is above you. So he turned around the words a little bit and he said there's something quite profound that we can glean from this, this statement. And he said, know that what is above you, mimach, is from you. What occurs, he meant, in the celestial spheres, in the spiritual realms, in the heavenly realms, energetically and spiritually, is a product of our human behavior. The way we conduct ourselves and the way we perceive things the beliefs that we have on a mental level and the actions that we do on a physical level, that's what determines what goes on in the heavenly spheres. But in quantum physics terms and in energetic terms and in experiential terms, what it means is that we are choosing a particular vibrational level for ourselves. So the thought patterns and the beliefs that, that we adopt and the behaviors that we enact in our lives and reflecting back at us experiences which are in resonance with our vibrational level. Ray Perkel using EFT to help others with relief from persistent emotional problems such as anxiety, trauma, depression, phobias, addictions, as well as many chronic physical issues like headaches, allergies, and back pain. Even serious diseases may respond positively to this fascinating technique, which has long-term benefits. EFT gives the entire energy system a complete overhaul by tapping on key meridians in a time span of 20 to 30 seconds. I have a principle that I work by. I ask my clients, you know, it sounds like that happened. When that happened, it really pushed your buttons, and they'll nod vigorously. Yeah, that really pushed my buttons. So I'll pose a question and I'll say, why do our buttons get pushed in our human experience? Why, you know, why is it that our buttons get pushed? And they think about it and I preempt their answer and I'll say, because they're there. Our buttons get pushed because they're there. We have buttons 
inside us. And the reason why they get pushed, and this is where divine providence comes in, God is wanting to show us and bring us to an awareness of things inside our own makeup that deserve attention. And if we pay attention to those things and allow ourselves to resolve unresolved pain, for example, or whatever it might be, stresses that we haven't dealt with, then we can free ourselves emotionally and become much more effective in our lives as human beings. I think everybody has a natural healing talent. I don't think there's any human being who's completely devoid of that ability. And what's done it for me is the idea of personal growth and transformation through my own experience, through my own journey of, of healing pain in my own life and, uh, and developing my own consciousness um, of what it means to be a human being in this world and becoming more effective in my life. Um, understanding healing from the inside has, I think, more than anything empowered me to be effective in facilitating others. From the Middle Eastern countries, the Sephardic Jews are very sensitive to beauty and pleasure, and good eating has always been a part of their traditional life. Their cooking is of the kind that lifts the spirits, and hospitality an all-important part of their culture. Entertaining warmly, graciously, and constantly, it's no surprise that the aromatic and colorful orange and almond semolina cake is a favorite amongst the Sephardic community. Today we are going to do one of my most favorite uh, Sephardic cake. The ingredients are simple. Uh, oranges, very Mediterranean, eggs, sugar, almonds, and semolina. Baking powder to make it lighter and oil so it can be powdered. Before we start doing the cake, I should grease my tin. I like to do it by hand and smear it very well and put some flour which I then knock to get it all covered and the pan is ready. Now all the ingredients go into the bowl. First the semolina, the sugar, almond and the baking flour. Give it a bit of a mix. Now to give it flavor, orange peel and just grate the orange into the dry mix. Now comes the oil and four eggs and mix very well. And the lightness will come also from the syrup that we are going to prepare later and pour over the cake. Put it in the prepared tin and just even it up. It will even itself even more during the baking. The cake is baked at about 180 degrees centigrade for about 30 to 45 minutes. Because the texture of the cake is a bit dense, uh, we are using one of the favorite tricks of the Middle East is to add syrup to the hot cake. To do that, we are using lemon juice, sugar, and orange juice. So let's put the lemon juice in. We need about 100 milliliters of orange juice it's about two oranges. And now the sugar, and we'll take it to the stove. Let it boil for about two or three minutes, 
and it should be poured boiling over the cake. The cake is ready, so let's take it out of the oven. Nice and golden on top. Now, to get the syrup to penetrate, I make a few holes in the crust of the cake and take the boiling syrup off the heat and slowly pour it over the cake. Now, leave the cake for a few minutes to rest and absorb the, the rest of the liquid. Get something which is a bit taller than the cake tin. Put the tin on top and open it. And here it is. Now you can lift the cake and put it on your cake stand. Here is the semolina almond and orange cake. Beautifully moist, cooked in the middle, and absolutely yummy. To add a bit of extra richness, I serve creme fraiche on the side. Mmm, delicious. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you've missed any of our previous episodes, please go to our website at www.spiritsister.co.za to view our past shows. And remember, we'd love to hear from you, so do find us on Facebook at Spirit Sister Productions Network. As always, from me, Nikki, and the entire team, shalom and have a safe and peaceful weekend.